Our first presenter on, uh, presenter on this topic will be Dr. James C. Robeson II. Dr. Robeson is trained in internal medicine, pediatrics, and rheumatology. He completed his medical school training at Howard University College of Medicine in Washington, D.C. Uh, and completed a dual training program in internal medicine and pediatrics at the uh, Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's board certified in both internal medicine and rheumatology and is currently the director of rheumat rheumatological division of Greater Metropolitan Orthopedics in Clinton, Maryland here. Dr. Robeson was awarded Physician of the Year in 2006 by the NANBPW Incorporated. The Washingtonian Magazine has recognized him in every issue as one of the top physicians in rheumatology from 2002 to, 2000, uh, to 2014. He also served as Assistant Professor of Medicine at Howard University College uh, Hospital and George Washington University Hospital and as Faculty Chief and Director of Rheumatological Education at Providence Hospital in Washington, D.C. As a member of FEN's Survival Network, Dr. Robeson and the other uh, speakers will follow, will, the follow will discuss their experience facing prostate cancer. Dr. Robeson. I, I think we better hear. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. I thank Mr. Farrington for this uh, venue and being a new member of the FEN Network. I thank Dr. Shelton for coming um, and inviting me to a program of such magnitude. I'm very new to this. And uh, a physician spoke earlier today and said he doesn't like the term prostate cancer survivor. As I am a one-year survivor status post-aggressive treatment for advanced prostate disease, it was very interesting, it was diagnosed in my 48th year of life. It was very interesting to me because I also had problems with that term survivor. I didn't feel like I had enough history to actually say that term. It's something you have to learn to accept. So I'm gonna adopt a term that I believe he said warrior. I like that because it is a battle. Where does my story begin? As I said, I'm one year post aggressive treatment for prostate disease and I will tell you, I, as the uh, physician was just talking, Dr. Cooney I believe was speaking about family history I'm a physician and did not know that there was a strong history of prostate cancer in my family. My family from the South, North Carolina. After I was diagnosed, I found out that it had three uncles who had prostate disease. My grandfather had died of prostate disease and we always, I was always told that he had colon disease. He had prostate, three of his sons had prostate. My father died at the age of 69 of a uh, complication of, of, heart, of a heart attack. But nonetheless, he had BPH when he passed, but biopsy proven um, BPH, not prostate cancer. What's interesting is I suspect he also had prostate disease, significant prostate disease. I will tell you as a physician, I was very much in tune with prostate illness. And so therefore, when I started having symptoms at about the age of 45, 46, those symptoms were symptoms of dysuria, symptoms of trouble going to the bathroom. It's just the extreme changes. When I started seeing a board certified urologist whom I had researched at length through context, being a physician in this area, I felt very comfortable with my doctor. We worked together for two years following a normal PSA with only subtle changes, never in an abnormal range, and the women in the audience will appreciate this. It was my girlfriend who came with me to every visit who actually said, why are we not biopsy? An interesting thing is, her statement of why are we not biopsying this man after two years of being under surveillance convinced the two physicians in the room, myself and my urologist, we need to do a biopsy. Never abnormal as she saved my life. The biopsy showed, she couldn't be here this morning, she'll be here this afternoon. She's gonna be, she's my fiance now, and <laughs> we're getting married next month. The interesting thing about it is, the biopsy showed that the disease was outside the barn, as you can say. It was not amenable to surgical intervention, not to the bone, but again, clean margins would have been difficult. So when I say aggressive disease, brachytherapy, uh, transurethral resection of the prostate, um, radiation therapy, went through that aggressively and never missed a day of work, and that's God. When the, delivery, when, the, when the information was given to me, you have prostate disease, you have advanced, as the urologist said to me that day, I'll never forget, he said, there's something ugly here. And that was how he came in and talked to me. We had been friends and colleagues for two years. He was so destroyed, he came in and said, there's ugliness here. And um, I never forget when I left that day to go into work, right from the, from the uh, diagnosis, 
that a message came to me from the Lord and said, not all illness is unto death, but so that God may be glorified. So I'm thankful for this opportunity to be able to present. I will say that um, it has been a very, very difficult course. And we talk about the non-modifiable risk factors, age, um, family history. What's important, I think, also to realize is the psychosocial effect of stress in your life. Three years before my diagnosis, my life couldn't have been any better. As you can hear from my resume, very, very prosperous and, 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 and a, um, successful physician here in the Washington, D.C. area. The interesting thing about that also is wonderful family, had been married for 20 years, three incredible children, all attending HBCUs and doing very well, very, very uh, prosperous practice, and the bottom dropped out just like that. It can happen. And when all the stress came down, that's when I started having the prostate symptoms, which, as I said, people might say, why did you wait two years for the biopsy? I will tell you something, the urologist and I, we discussed this case, or my case. Normal digital rectal examination every three to four months. Didn't stay away from that. Normal PSA levels. Even the ultrasound said the area of your prostate that's enlarged is the median lobe, not typically involved in prostate cancer, not the posterior lobes. So it's interesting enough, also, when you had the TERP, the median lobe was not involved, as you suspect. But this thing sat in a normal-looking prostate, a normal clinical examination of a prostate, with all the symptoms of a young man having BPH, treated aggressively with symptoms to improve BPH, Avidart, and the medication you may know, which, of course, made the symptoms better. So again, there was really no pressing thing, but family history would have been the key. Know your history. Um, we're going to have opportunity for questions. I'm going to just make this short because you can hear a lot of stories. But thank you for your time, and I appreciate your attention this morning.